today on Locked On Rockies. Well, when you give good teams that many opportunities to cash in on free bases, things aren't going to go so well. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the fifth day of September in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day, free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can fire off your Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. Uh, On today's episode, we're going to talk about walks. We're going to talk about how much of a bummer walks are. We're also going to talk about some stuff that stuck out from the game last night that's a little interesting, and the fact that the Rockies have their issues in some areas, especially on pitching, but they're not the bottom of baseball, which is a little surprising. Plus, Purple Rose got a piece out today saying that the youth movement in 2024 has been underwhelming. We're going to dive into that and more all on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we get into all the fun, we are brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is your spot to go for America's number one daily fan uh, fantasy. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase. This code is all lowercase. Locked on MLB to win $50 instantly when you play $5. So the thing that I get frustrated about a lot, especially with the Rockies, and, and you know, there's other pitchers and, and, and other teams that can certainly be uh, as frustrated in this situation as well as the Rockies, because surprisingly enough, the Rockies aren't the worst in baseball, but I am really tired of walking, watching a ton of walks. Like, and and I understand Blaylock's a young guy. It's a great team. I get it. But six batters walked and then another walk from Bird and a walk from Peralta. It's just too, I mean, it's, it's sure it's a young guy and sure it might be an anomaly. I'm trying to get a Patrick Lyons tweet up about uh, walking batters uh, there from last night, but I just don't quite grasp this i mean i guess i i do but the control issues for the rockies are just incredibly infuriating there there's just something that the 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 rockies are are missing and it and it's clearly the strike zone but uh here's here's what i was uh the the tweet i was trying to bring up here uh bradley blaylock has walked six batters during his five innings of work against atlanta tonight it's the 12th time under blood black since 2017 a rockies pitcher has walked six plus believe it or not that happened 12 times in 1999 clearly jim leland did not want to go to his bullpen and then here's another just follow-up tweet here from from patrick lines uh, before this one since 2018 rockies have drafted slash signed and developed six starting pitchers carl kaufman ryan feltner antonio santos ryan castellini rico garcia and peter lambert Only Feltner and Lambert have started four-plus games or thrown 36-plus innings in the majors. It just goes to show that the the pitching focus of, of of the past, as we talked about yesterday, the the approach continues to not work. And the Rockies this year are a team that have walked 484 batters. That puts them 21 higher than the Oakland Athletics. So the Rockies are still pretty firmly entrenched here in that sixth spot. They're only three away from the Miami Marlins, and they are only seven away from the Houston Astros. Wow, that's surprising to see. Angels at 515, Mets at 522, White Sox 560. But it's still... That the the walks are just such a when you play it where you play with the pitching talent that you have, they're just so deadly, man. They're just so deadly. And I I, I don't know. I don't there's there's just something where it's just they could when especially out the bullpen. And I know again the focus should be on Blaylock, but it's it's just 
to see people come out and just not be able to hit zones, to throw four pitch walks, to see so many uncompetitive at bats from Rockies pitching this year in certain instances is frustrating. And there's a reason why the Rockies have a 5.51 ERA, the highest in baseball by a long shot, I would say. No other team has a 5 ERA in baseball, let alone a 5-5. Five five. And a big part of that is the fact that the Rockies have control issues. A big part of that are the fact that the Rockies give up free passes. If you combine with, 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 with hit by a pitch, the Rockies will still probably sit just about where they're at. I think the Astros will drop down to, you know, drop down to where the Rockies are. are and I think the, uh, I think the Rockies end up in the top five when it comes to walks. I think every, if you do that for the other teams, all still above the Rockies. But being a team that's top five in walks while also being a team that's bottom in uh, uh, the, the bottom of the barrel when it comes to strikeouts, you, 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 you run such a bigger risk every time you walk a batter. The Rockies' inability to get batters out consistently means that you get punished by walks much more frequently. And when you walk eight batters in a game against a team like the Atlanta Braves, you're going to lose that game. You're going to lose that game very often. It's weird, and sometimes not. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to happen, but... When you walk a batter and then especially in the beginning of the game and, and you let things get out of hand, you get punished for it early and the Rockies have to dig out of holes that they just aren't always capable of. And there were moments again, again, it was great to see some, some, uh, uh, you know, Hilliard and Chuck have some, some big ABs. And, and if we're looking at walks too, the Rockies last night, drew some walks they were they were pretty successful when it came to uh being patient at the at, at bats which is a, a great sign but it's not doing yourself any favor when on the other side you're walking eight batters in the game rockies drew five walks in the game but on the flip side they also struck out what is this wow every single braves pitcher that pitched got at least two strikeouts and four of the pitchers that appeared appeared in one inning. Ugh. See, like it's it's that type of that's that's how good the other team that's it goes back to exactly what we were talking about yesterday. That's how good the other team is. That's how good that pitching staff is. You I mean or at least compared to the Rockies, I know the Braves have had their issues this year. But when you see that that's the standard you get jealous. I do, at least. Let's go back. Let's see here. Nobody has struck out more batters this year than the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves are also in the bottom half. Uh, the, they are in the bottom five, bottom six in baseball, tied with Tampa in walking people. 393. I, I mean, I just seethe with jealous rage. Watching effective pitching, especially this year, and, and 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 I know it's the aggressive Rockies, it's the young Rockies, but to just watch pitchers just mow down the Rockies time after time after time, and then to see the Rockies uh, uh, pitchers come up and miss spots, walk pitchers, lose at bats, it gets incredibly frustrating. That's uh, it, it's again why the why the 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 philosophies of the Rockies and the issues with the Rockies are on full display when you're playing against a team like Atlanta when you're playing against a team that that you know by their standards has underperformed this year but yet when you look at across the board on their statistical categories they're really really good That's the level where there are, I mean, that's the top of the top. That's the cream of the crop. If you want to, if you want to be able to, to, to handle business, not just win games, but, but be an effective ball club. There's a model there. The Braves have had a model for success for years and years and years, whereas the Rockies still haven't been able to figure out how to navigate their playing on the road 30 years later. 
And I guess a lot of these points are kind of going all over the place, but but it, it just goes back to to again my lack of confidence in the philosophies that's been instilled in in, in development of the current state uh, of the current Rockies pitchers. Nibbling at the zones, not like just I, it would be nice to have the Rockies just go up there and there's a guy whose whole thing is I'm painting, I'm I'm literally throwing smoke and I'm hitting my spots. Because watching the Rockies it, it just miss spots and watching the Rockies walk batters is 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 just frustrating. Especially when on the other side they get blown away and they strike out 16 times. 16 times. The Rockies walked half of that and they struck out six guys. More walks than strikeouts last night for the Rockies. A huge, huge problem. And it needs to be addressed. I want to talk about another lopsided record the Rockies have, and it kind of goes with what we were talking about in the, the first, and it's going to relate a little bit to this uh, piece from Purple Row from Kenneth Weber that we're going to talk about as well. That's all coming up on segment number two of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we dive into that, we got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike on other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. So that means you are going to pick the players that you want when you want. And you're going to be able to win big. All you got to do is pick more or less on two to six players stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an, insur an injury insurance policy though, so that your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks says your picks are still live. Prize Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one pick doesn't hit. All you have to see for yourself is available on the Prize Picks app. When you download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB, you're going to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus; it's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game this is the locked on rockies podcast we are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services bringing you your daily colorado rockies talk right here on the locked on podcast network where you can find your team every day it's where you can also find locked on mlb for your second listen our guy sully is going to be breaking down all things major league baseball for you as the playoff race continues to heat up Every win matters for those in the playoff race. So stay up to date with all things baseball with our pal Sully. And if you need Rockies baseball on the go or at home or wherever you get Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app, that's where you should head because they got you covered for Rockies play by play all season long. So we were talking about the walk issues with the Colorado Rockies uh, here. They've walked. 487 batters this year, and that puts them in the sixth place spot. Uh, we'll see if they uh, swap out with uh, any teams towards the end of the year here. It would be a bummer, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I saw this on the uh, or on the broadcast. I was actually watching the away broadcast as I was uh, out and about yesterday, and uh, the Braves were 15 and three, I believe, and now 16 and three against the Rockies in their last stretch of games so what is that 19 games <laughs> and i've done a lot of podcasts talking about the braves smoke in the rockies and so i i i i don't really need to dive into that but it but it's just like it's the eye openers it's it's the wow the rockies are last place in strikeouts by a decent margin wow the rockies are a top team in walks wow the rockies are a top team in uh or a, a bottom team i guess it depends on what you're saying in uh, that should be across those a bottom team in 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 uh whip they have the highest whip out of anybody in baseball they have the highest uh uh average against in baseball they have the highest era in baseball i mean it it it, it just is it's a little bit deflating i mean because it, because it's not when you see that level 
of last place. You're a little bit bummed by the fact that some guys haven't taken steps forward. But you also have to mix in the fact that the rotation has not been what the rotation should have been the last couple of years. Injuries have been crazy. But it's still... I'm still a little frustrated at the result at the results of some of those young guys. I'm still frustrated at reading that Patrick Lyons tweet about having only two pitchers get into the majors and 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 perform there. And and really the performances by the pitchers that have made it haven't necessarily been that great. Since 2018, Rockies have drafted slash signed and developed six starting pitchers. Carl Kaufman, 2023, Ryan Feltner, 2021, Antonio Santos, 2020, Ryan Castellini, 2020, Rico Garcia, 2019, Peter Lambert, 2019. Only Feltner and Lambert have started four plus games or thrown 36 plus innings in the majors. Patrick Lyons. That stuff matters. That stuff, it, 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 it's a bummer. Like, look at that's six pitchers, and with only two of them panning out, and I, and I, and panning out to being what they are, that's a bummer. Yes, not every player uh, uh, makes it to the bigs. It's very hard to make it to the bigs, and, and it's very hard to be a good major leaguer at the big league level. But you just see that type of stuff, and you're just like, what happened? What is going? Like, like again, we're just seeing the 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 bottom of the barrel stuff, and we just, is and it's and it's just is it just total lack of talent acquisition? Is it lack of talent acquisition and development? Is it what what truly is the the main root cause of the Rockies? And I think a lot of people have different answers to that question. And it's not just uh, it's not just pitchers that have been underwhelming, especially young uh, Rockies pitchers. There there have been some other stuff. And Kenneth Weber writes about this here in Purple Row. Colorado's youth movement in twenty twenty four has been underwhelming. Uh, starts off by highlighting the the solid production of Brenton Doyle and Ezekiel Tovar and and the growth of Michael Tolia. So so it's not just he, Kenneth starts this piece off by by at least setting the stage there, but then follows up with this. Unfortunately, when it comes to the youth movement for the Colorado Rockies in 2024, that is the beginning and the end of the positives at the MLB level. When he's talking about Doyle, Tovar, and Tolia. Any year that started with the acceptance that it will be lousy with losses, the silver lining was always the continued progression of the team's young regulars with the eventual additions of even more prospects along the way. The sentiment began with Nolan Jones, who produced a historic 2020 season in 2023. Unfortunately, results in that category have bordered on catastrophic as Jones has managed nothing short of a lost season with his 216, 356, 324 slash line and just three home runs with six, in 62 games played. While the organization boasts about its prospects on the way, these two injuries, uh, talking about Jordan Beck and then um, Nolan Jones's injuries, uh, proved too severe of a hit to their depth. Instead, Colorado and manager Bud Black have leaned heavily on Jake Cave, on Jake Cave who was acquired from the Philadelphia Phillies in late spring training, to the tune of 106 games played, and Sam Hilliard, who has logged a fairly productive 42 games. The infield saw glimpses of potential big leaguers when Aaron Shunk and top prospect Adiel Amador were called up to fill in for veterans Ryan McMahon and Brendan Rodgers. The brief cameo for Amador early in the year was expectedly not very productive, but was supposed to be an indication on how close he is to, be, to being a big leaguer. That has not come to pass, unfortunately, as he spent his season trying to regain his footing in the minors since his debut. Shunk, meanwhile, has stuck on the roster for much longer, but primarily as a, bent bat, a bench bat with erratic playing time. It does not help that the team chose to hold on to Ryan McMahon and Rodgers, along with virtually everyone else on the roster at the August trade deadline, keeping the path to playing time for its younger players clogged. This applies to catcher Elias Diaz, who was retained until his eventual release just two weeks after the deadline. This opened the door for top catching prospect Drew Romo to get the call. And then there's been little to discuss on the pitching side. Uh, Kenneth says reliever Seth Halverson just got the call to the majors, which does it, it, he follows it with generates genuine intrigue. That guy's that guy is fascinating. He certainly is a, 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 a interesting young electric arm that at this stage of the season, we kind of needed something to be able to raise our eyebrows a little bit about and be like, huh, that's pretty interesting. And uh, here's here's something here from again from Patrick Klein's three three banger tweets from Patrick yesterday. Uh, Ryan, uh, Rocky Seth Halverson strikes out Marcelo Zuna looking his second punch out of the night. Halverson has three scoreless innings under his belt for a total of 2.2 innings pitched. Good start to career, uh, to the career for the seventh round pick in the 2023 MLB draft. And so in addition to that, uh, that tweet, 
he posts a picture of uh, the top pitch velocity, and it's the all Seth Halverson, and all of them are over 100 miles. Well, there's like 100.8, 100.8, 100.5, 100.3, and then the top speed, 101.1 miles per hour. See, that's what I mean. Like, we're we're, we're, we're going to, like, does that not just entice you? Does that just not make you pumped? That, I, that the Rockies can have someone that can come out of the bullpen and throw 100 miles an hour. Yes, we know that we know the risks of high velocity pitchers, not only at cores, but in this modern age of baseball. We talked about it yesterday, and there's been plenty of look into it. But that's the type of stuff we need to see. We need to continue to see, you know, I, I mean, there are little flashes with some of these bullpen pieces coming up here at the end of the season, but there needs to be that type of level of intrigue where it's like, holy smokes. I mean, to go out and just uh, against good teams, throw gas and get strikeouts is just that's refreshing to see. That's refreshing to 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 see as a as a, as a as a fan. I don't want to see. I, I I'm kind of tired of seeing things that are, are that that are a little you know that like we talked yesterday, sinker slider, and we know that is changing, but it is nice to have a guy that just throws gas whose whole thing is just coming in here and saying, I'm going to overpower you with my pitch velocity. I'm going to dominate you because I can hit a spot and I can throw the ball 100 miles an hour. My point is, it's just a team that continues to be weird continues to and, and and you know what maybe we'll dive into this i think underwhelming is a pretty good uh a pretty good word used by 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 kenneth there let's dive into that coming up next on today's episode of locked on rockies before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Ibotta, sandals, sunscreen, snacks for the kids. What do these have in common? You're probably buying a ton again this summer, but don't stress about the cost. Use Ibotta and get cash back on all your purchases when you stock up on all your summer essentials. Maybe if you're, uh, you know, unfortunately, somewhere in the in the rear view mirror. Do the same for back to school shopping. I bought it as a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. Earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies, even toys, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you earn cash back that you can withdraw to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Simply add offers in the app, upload your receipt, and voila. The money is yours. It's time you join the 50 million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On MLB when you register. Just go back to the App Store or the Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back, and use code Locked On MLB. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store, and use code Locked On MLB. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much again for making us that first listen. And uh, folks, don't forget, SiriusXM's got you covered here as we head through baseball and uh, the baseball season, the rest of Rockies baseball. Because they'll have you covered for the playoffs as well, so don't miss out there. Wanted to uh, finish up on uh, the... Uh, reading here from uh, Kenneth Wa uh, not Kenneth Walker, Kenneth Weber's piece from uh, Purple Row. I got fantasy football trade trade uh, uh, drafts on my brain, right? Uh, so while Beck and Jones are finally healthy, Romo is now up, and Veen is one step away from the majors. This is all something that could have happened much earlier in the season to similar results. Additionally, the lack of activity and clearing up veterans from the roster le leads to diminished playing time for these young players when they do finally get rosters the rostered. So for a team that's in the midst of its sixth straight losing season, but preaching patience for the players on the horizon, it's a little hard to get the benefit of the doubt when you seem to be reluctant to embrace giving most of these prospects a chance to get their footing at the major league level when there's nothing left to lose. And I I think that nails it. The Rockies, what, what do you have to lose? What have you had to lose? The Rockies have been at the bottom of the NL West since day one. 
and they have only fallen further behind. It is, yes, you can you can enjoy the moments that Jake Cave has brought to you this year, but it has not helped the Rockies develop their players of the future. It has not helped the players that have been blocked by him. There are a lot of Rockies players that have not benefited from Jake Cave playing 100 games. There are a lot of players that have not benefited from Sam Hilliard getting the, the, the second look that he got. There are a lot of players that have not benefited from when Chris Bryant finds himself in the lineup, or Charlie Blackman for that matter. The Rockies have to give their players a chance. And they have to embrace it because, agreed, I, I, I have to agree. The, the youth movement outside of the growth of Brenton Doyle and the, play, and the consistent playing time given to Michael Tolia has been underwhelming this year. The trade deadline was the ultimate symbol of that. The the lack of, I mean, and again, I understand the market was probably very poor for Rockies players. That's fine, but take lottery picks at this point. Are you really focused in the future and investing in the future of what Jake Cave brings you next season? Are you focused with Hillary, like X, Y, Z? McMahon, I understand. But boy, does Brendan Rodgers keep popping back up in trade rumors. Every time I see what might not happen in, or might happen in the offseason, I mean, why did you wait? Why are you allowing Brendan? I mean, is it is are you allowing to have Brendan Rodgers to have one more audition for for you, the Rockies fans? Or and then what are you going to do about Amador? Are you really going to buy into Amador? It's there. There are there are the 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 full rebuild youth movement has not fully been embraced by the Rockies. It's gotten better. There have been certainly moments. I mean, we have seen six. We we, we saw in the first game, we've seen lineups with a lot of young guys. But Jake Cave's going to play in over 100 games this year. Or already has. And that's a significant portion of the games. That's a significant portion of the starts. That Goodman, that Beck, that uh, Jones. I mean, I mean, there's, there's, I know the injuries are uh, derailed a lot of that. That is certainly true. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that there are other guys that could have been getting that playing time, getting that opportunity. And that goes for a lot, you know, most of the vets on the Rockies. So we could really under, so we could start building an idea of the future. So we could have players start building confidence after getting extended starts like Bretton Doyle last year. Look at Michael Tolio. Whoa, crazy. You like, you, 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 Michael Tolia looks way more confident and comfortable at the major league level when you let him start every game. Crazy. We'll see. Rocky's got to get a win here to avoid being swept by the Braves before heading to uh, Milwaukee. 51 and 89. The Rockies are 11 losses away from losing 100 games again. Rockies are also 10 wins away from hitting that uh, over 60 and a half, the road to 60 wins. So that's where we're at with those. Not a lot of games left to do it. A lot of games left. Again, well, there are a good, decent amount of games left and against good teams. So the Rockies have to step up, and get the job done. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen today. Find us on your favorite streaming services and on the Lockdown Rockies YouTube channel. Every time you like the videos, every time you subscribe, you're helping the show grow. Really do appreciate that. And uh, folks, for your second listen, go check out Locked On MLB. Or if you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked On Broncos, Locked On Avalanche, Locked On Nuggets, and Locked On Buffs, all free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. Until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.